You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. In this Mass, we pray for the donor's intention. And to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, raise us up, we pray, to the author of our salvation, who is seated at your right hand, so that when our Savior comes again in majesty, those who have given new birth in baptism, those you have given new birth in baptism may be clothed with blessed immortality. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Corinth, one night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid to speak out, nor allow yourself to be silenced. I am with you. I have so many people on my side in this city that no one will even attempt to hurt you. So Paul stayed at Corinth, preaching the word of God among them for 18 months. But while Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a concerted attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. We accuse this man, they said, of persuading people to worship God in a way that breaks the law. Before Paul could open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, Listen, you Jews, if this were a misdemeanor or a crime, I would not hesitate to attend to you. But if it is only squibbles about words and names and about your own law, when you must deal with it, then you must deal with it yourselves. I have no intention of making legal decisions about things like that. Then he sent them out of the court. And at once they all turned on Sostenes, the synagogue president, and beat him in front of the courthouse. Gallio refused to pay any notice at all. After staying on for some time, Paul took leave of the brothers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At St. Cray, he had his hair cut off because of a vow he had made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is king of all the earth. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy, for the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. God is King of all the earth. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. 
our inheritance, our glory is from him, given to Jacob out of love. God is king of all the earth. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blasts. Sing praise for God. Sing praise. Sing praise to our king. Sing praise. God is king of all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remain and remind you of all I have said to you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, you will be weeping and wailing while the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. A woman in childbirth suffers because her time has come. But when she has given birth to the child, she forgets the suffering in her joy that a man has been born into the world. So it is with you. You are sad now. But I shall see you again and your hearts will be full of joy. And that joy no one shall take from you. When that day comes, you will not ask me any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, I like to refer to the story of an orphan. The orphan in the house suffers sometimes and in most cases because the orphan has got nowhere to turn to. He or she has to live within the bounds and limits of the foster parents and the other children in the house. And there can be great suffering. But what can give the orphan joy at the moment is that there is a future where he or she will be liberated and separated from this family and have a life of his or her own. When the orphan reflects on the life like this, which is going to come in the future, that I'm not going to be here perpetually, I'm not going to suffer for all time here, there is a future for me that can bring a kind of joy to the orphan. And the orphan will begin to look forward to that joy which lies ahead. And in the gospel, when Jesus says to the disciples, the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful. This is what he's talking about. That at the moment, there may be so many things in the world that will limit our joy. But when we look forward to the joy that we shall have in the kingdom of God, that can already begin to inspire us to look at life differently. And when we begin to look at life differently, knowing that there is even greater joy lying ahead of us, we can enjoy the moment. And so there is a relationship between the future joy in the Lord, in the kingdom of God, and the joy that we have in the present moment. When we do not see the need to be happy because of what lies ahead, that will affect the kind of joy I have in the moment. Knowing that this world, this life is temporary and I do not have to be worried about so many things, but to look ahead at what I'm going to enjoy for all eternity. And so when Jesus says, I will send you the advocate, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come to give us that kind of strength and grace to enjoy the present moment knowing that we have a future which is going to be blissful, a future which is going to have 
perpetual joy that cannot be curtailed. And that is why Jesus says, your heart will be full of joy, and that joy no one can take away from you. The joy that we have in God, the joy in the kingdom of God, and the joy that can come from God can never be taken away from us. Because it is not in things that are external, but it is from within us. Because of our faith, our love, our hope in God. We see what St. Paul is already enjoying. He's enjoying that kind of joy. People brought him out in Corinth. They wanted to, to try him because of his preaching. But God gave him joy. Paul had suffered because of the gospel. But God said to him, do not worry. I have people already set out for you to defend you. And indeed, that happened. And Paul already began to enjoy some form of joy in the present moment. So let us ask God for this joy, the joy that the world cannot give. We cannot find joy in external things. We cannot find joy in material things. We cannot find joy in human beings. But when we turn to God and know that whatever I'm going through in the present time, I can have sorrow and solace in the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, fill me with that joy. Let our prayer be for us today. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of the faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. O Mary, you shine continuously along our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross were near to the pain of Jesus keeping our faith, keeping your faith firm. Your salvation of the Roman people know what we need, and we trust that you will provide for those needs so that as at Cana of Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and took up our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas. We who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously 
when Christ, our Passover husband, sacrificed, for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Judge our Apostolic Administrator and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, our hearts are on.